disrupt it. Hello, one and all. Welcome to this edition of Kit's Corner. Up in a fantastic day so far. So we got to mention about this. It's been chaotic in the House of Commons Parliament of Canada. And I mean actually chaotic. It's actually become almost like a wrestling event to watch both Justin Trudeau, our Prime Minister, and Pierre Polyev fighting it out on everything from the carbon uh increase the carbon tax increase that's gonna happen April 1st. I'm not kidding you. It's happening on April Fool's Day that everything from groceries to gasoline to electricity to your home bills is going to increase vastly. And I just want to reiterate that uh, France tried to do a carbon pricing uh, a little while ago. It was at like one, maybe 2%. And people stormed uh, bridges and streets and shut the whole city down. That was when the Yellow Vest movement came out. And here we are about to increase the carbon pricing up to 23%. And that's also including a tax on top of a tax on April 1st. So just so everyone's aware, just so everyone's aware of what's going to happen in the coming years here in Canada. And it, it got to this interesting back and forth. And I got to show you to uh, some of the clips here because this is just, it is just absolutely chaotic. Um, between how the leader of the opposition, Pierre Polyev, um, excellently states about carbon pricing and how it's affecting middle-class Canadians, how they can't afford the basic necessities. Already, we have mass inflation. We have high costs of living. People can't afford to uh, put food on the table. They can't afford shelter. A lot of them are homeless. We have such an epidemic right now. Past the pandemic, we're in an epidemic right now. and. Justin Trudeau responds in like the most childish, insane way, barbaric possible. Listen to this. The parliamentary budget officer testified that the majority of households will pay more in carbon taxes than they will get back in rebates. He, there is a table showing that every single province in which this tax applies, the middle class families pay vastly more than they get back. And Canadians know it because under this prime minister, they've seen their food, their fuel, their homes, their heating go through the roof. But why don't we just end the debate and let Canadians decide? Side and have a carbon tax election. The parliamentary budget officer clearly. So, here Polya makes the notion of why are we leaving it to the people? Why are we not letting people decide whether this carbon tax is beneficial for them? Because I hear a lot of debate. I hear a lot of speculation on, well, it's it's kind of good, but it's bad, but it's also good and bad, and you hear sides of the argument um personally and i've said this before um it's a whole big setup the whole carbon tax the whole carbon pricing to think that's gonna affect climate change or make you know the environment better for better for people it's an entire scam it's an entire scam just like what we saw with you know people from al gore to greta thunberg unfortunately and I thought at once Greta Thunberg was on the right track until I realized she was hanging out with, you know, the jet class. She was hanging out with the WEF. She was hanging out with uh, people that were oil tycoons. And she wasn't protesting against the private jet class. She wasn't going after the billionaires that are on eight different yachts. She wasn't going after the WEF that's been relentlessly against farming, relentlessly against nature relentlessly against, you know, agriculturalists. And she wasn't even going after the military bases that we have, which is the number one polluter on planet Earth is our existential military bases around the world. So maybe if we stop the bombing of all these different nations, we can actually make the environment livable for people. Think about that. Think how simple that would be. But they don't come to those solutions. They want to tax you the average person, they want to come after you for your dollars. They want to scold you for not driving a 
$40,000 electric vehicle and take away your gas power lawnmowers? Is, is it really beneficial to the planet considering Mr. Take a Vacation every month who goes on private jets and goes to all these different places? Aren't you worried about your carbon emissions, Mr. Trudeau? Well, here's his response. Spelled out that eight out of ten Canadian families in areas where the price on pollution applies get more money back every year than they pay in the price on pollution. That's because we created a plan that not only is one of the strongest plans to fight climate change in the world, but it puts more money back in the pockets of middle class Canadians as we build a stronger future, better careers, more competitiveness, and a safer environment for generations to come. That's the plan we have. That's not what they're doing. The 60 million. By the way, the people that are relentless on carbon. I just want to put out there that NASA did a study, and we showed it on this channel before. NASA did a study that showed that excessive carbon dioxide, which is what they're trying to tax you on, carbon dioxide that we produce as we're breathing, is actually beneficial. It actually vegetates the land. We've seen a greening effect to the globe. That's from a NASA study. While they're trying to tax you for carbon dioxide that nature produces on the regular. Carbon dioxide is beneficial for plants. That's why I, I, I find it so astonishing that we're investing billions of dollars. We're wasting billions of dollars to create these, you know, metal boxes to carbon capture everything. When literally we can plant dozens and dozens of forests of trees. That would do the exact same thing and be more beneficial because they collect the carbon and then they produce oxygen, which clearly some of these people might need. I think they're losing in their brain. Million dollar arrive scam is just the tip of the iceberg. We now learn that there are five million dollars in additional fraud that has been identified by the department. So now he's. So this is this is a montage of clips, by the way. I should I should have mentioned that beforehand. But now he's going on to the Arrive Can app. That was the the application, the surveillance tool that was implemented during COVID to spy, surveil, and track down all Canadians. Take your personal data. This is the this is their introduction to the digital IDs. And they're still trying to push it as much as possible. COVID's over. COVID is over. That's not me saying that. That's the CDC saying that. COVID is over. But they still want to track, surveil, monitor because what came of COVID was the opportunity for more exploitation. Of public procurement. And this is out of the $21 billion the Prime Minister is now spending on outside consultants, a 100% increase and fully with the support of the NDP. Can the Prime Minister tell us how much of this $21 billion is fraud? The situation is obviously unacceptable, which is why authorities are looking into this procurement process. Anyone who took advantage of our COVID response to save Canadian lives should face consequence. All federal contracts with these companies have been suspended as the investigation continues. He's saying that people should be investigated and hold account to the people that were frauding Canadians during COVID. So you doing authoritarian mandates, you going against truckers, you going against the Freedom Convoy, you putting Tamara Lynch and Chris Barber forcibly in prison, arresting them, holding them account in trial. Did you then serve a jail sentence then, Justin Trudeau? Or Theresa Tan, the, the nation uh, national uh, director of Canada uh, Health Health Services? Or Christian Freeland that uh, openly stated that we're going to freeze bank accounts? When are we going to get that justice? When are we holding those people accountable? Oh, wait, they're not. They're never going to hold those people accountable. They're never going to hold people accountable for a pandemic that, they're, that they use to exploit, to further the cause of exploitation and authoritarianism.
this is the, the golden opportunity for them. Why would they go after someone that gave them a gateway to, ma to allow mass surveillance to take control of people's finances, to dictate the motions of everybody, to do a complete psyoptic brain delusion on people? We had society almost collapse by sowing division. So much so that we were barbaric towards each other. You really think they're going to do diligence of tracking down the wrongful people of COVID that gave them the opportunity to do this? But everyone in this house noticed how quickly he pivoted from a question on Ukraine. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, his members are ashamed of him for forcing him to vote against Ukrainian Canadians, to vote against Ukraine, to vote against support that the Ukrainian president was asking for. Well, isn't that the pot calling the kettle black? Justin Trudeau is pointing the finger at Pierre Polyev for ditching question as Pierre Polyev is asking a question about a scandal, a $21 million scandal. Or do you say billion? I think it was million. I got to rewatch the tape. But uh, a scandal involving sur mass surveillance of Canadians. Ditch that away so we can send more money to a corrupt nation in East Europe. Now you know where the carbon pricing is going. Because you know for a fact, it is not making nature better. It's not helping the planet one bit. If it was that simple to collect dollars to change the weather, they would have done it years ago. And why is it that Canada is the only nation in North America and pra practically the world that is implementing this? And that's because other nations tried to do this. I, I Again, look at France. They try to put a, uh, a gas tax. They try to put carbon emissions pricing onto the people, onto the everyday people that don't really have a choice in the matter. It's not their fault that they have to commute to work in order to better themselves and live. But you, Justin Trudeau, you're the one taking excessive vacations. You're the one that's traveling around on private jets. You're the one implementing military bases and funding to all these different countries so we can mass slaughter and bomb everyone. Where's the retaliation on that that would actually benefit the planet and people as a whole? But he's going to dodge all those questions to bring up Ukraine again, which is amazing that he keeps doing this. I've seen this numerous times that every time he gets stuck on a question and he gets cornered with something, a, a serious issue on the matter, it's always back to Ukraine. Well, how come you're banning Ukraine? You're banning Ukraine. Think of all the Ukrainians that are dying right now. You're not going to ban in Ukraine. And he's screaming that as the face of the person who abandoned Canada. This is the Canadian leader who abandoned our country to tax you an extensive rate to send it to a corrupt nation in East Europe so they can mass slaughter each other over there. Does that sound like a noteworthy, trusted leader? Does that sound like the face of the true North strong and free? Do you, do you, do you find this a peacekeeping face? Those are all the things that we as Canadians endear to our, our society, to our heritage. We're not supposed to be the fighters. That was supposed to be an American thing. But here we are, Justin Trudeau, excessively attacking ordinary Canadians, drying up the, bleeding out this country dry, and taking all the reserves for more warfare overseas. On top of this, they're sending money to Israel. They're sending money to Palestine to keep that war afloat. And they're also sending money to Haiti, which we show on this channel. Justin Trudeau, his administration is sending money to Haiti to ignite a civil war in that country. 
That is not something we identify as Canadians. We're not war starters. We're supposed to be peacekeepers. And considering our country is barely holding on with duct, tapes, duct tape and band-aids, it's about time we looked at our dying empire. It's about time we looked at our situation and put the investments back at home, which he's not doing. He is barely doing. He, he, he says that all, all the carbon pricing you're going to get back, you're going to get more than what you pay for in carbon. And if that's the case, why are we taxing them? If they're not polluting as much carbon as they're saying, so why are we taxing people then? What's the point of it? <laughs> this is just a giant scam after another scam after another scam. This is the ultimate scammer. But at least he has pretty hair. And at least he's, you know, nice to the LGBTQ plus or, or QLP. Double, double, S, S plus, whatever it is. The alphabet soup. Um, and I guess people, other leader, I've heard other leaders uh, find him adorable. <laughs> like, a per, like a potential child. I don't know. But he definitely sure is acting childish. That's that's the response you give. That's the response you give. Why are you abandoning Ukraine? Why are you taking advantage of Canadians? And let me tell you, I'm not a fan of Pierre Polyev myself either. Um, because I know that he has faults. I know that he is also corrupt in, in, in other ways. But at least there's someone out there. At least there's someone out there. That's willing to acknowledge homelessness, that's willing to acknowledge the housing crisis, willing to acknowledge the cost of living, and willing to actually acknowledge why the truckers did what they did. Instead of calling them racist, xenophobic, homophobic, uh, anti-Semitic, like every name of the book. At least Pierre Polyev took that opportunity. I don't see him as being a better candidate. Um than this than what we have now but at least there's someone willing to acknowledge the real fundamental problems of what's happening right now and justin trudeau flakes out has a meltdown <laughs> switching gears from carbon tax to a real serious scandal like the arrive cam uh application and then go right to ukraine <laughs> unbelievable Thank you.